When I started making videos, I had a short list of cars that I wanted to drive personally and to share that experience with the viewers. The Honda CRX SI, or in this case, SIR, is one of those very few cars. Now this might sound crazy, but in many cases, this is a car that kicked off a whole generation of car driving enthusiasts or vehicle enthusiasts from a business perspective and just buying cars in the future. And that's because in the 80s and 90s, this represented something very special. It was attainable, it was very affordable, it was practical, it was economical, and because of its lightweight, it was crazy fun to drive. And as they closed out the generation of this car near the end, you had things like double wishbone suspension, independent rear suspension, something that you don't find anymore even on modern economical or fun cars. You have to pay a premium for a lot of that. Now, if you've been around long enough, you'll know there are catalysts in life. From early childhood with parents, religion, it could be movies, music, politicians, or even science, it helps to steer our path. In the case of the car world, it's no different. Some of our earliest experiences with cars or some of our favorite cars help to dictate our brand preferences in the future. The case of the CRX, this car helped to create a business that is still going today from the early 80s. Hi, I'm Scott Zellner, president of King Motorsports. Uh, King Motorsports started literally back in 1981 as an offshoot of a Honda dealership called King Honda here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The owner of King Honda, Jim Dentisi, was a multiple time junior karting champion. He built uh, a 1973 Honda Civic and went and won the SCCA National Championship in GT4. Uh, the GT4 National Championship was really important because it was Honda's very first championship of any kind on U.S. soil. Um, from there, that spawned a business called King, King Racing back in the day, um, and we built parts for other folks that were starting to race Honda Civic 1200s and distribute them throughout the United States. In 1984, Honda introduced the CRX. Um, it was a car unlike any other car at the time. It was a two-door, hatchback, sporty, 76 horsepower, which doesn't sound like anything right now but the car weighed under 2,000 pounds and it felt great. The big difference in 1988 compared to the first generation CRX is they got rid of the torsion beam front suspension and beam rear axle. And it, what they did is they replaced that with independent front and independent rear suspension, double A arms, front and rear. It was revolutionary for a front wheel drive car to be able to have you know, fully independent suspension. Most cars of that era used a beam axle which was okay, it was built to a, um, a price point, but this then again showed why Honda was thinking out of the box and was willing to put the development and time into making things work. It gave us possibilities. We raced it, we did everything with it. It, it, it created a platform in which we could create what we're doing right now. You know, it was all the racing stuff and all the aftermarket parts support and that just grew through the 90s and the 2000s into where we are today. We continue to, to move that basic chassis forward every year with, with fresh thinking and more technology, shock technology, and different ways to look at it. And it's pretty amazing that a car that could win races in 1988 can still win races in 2022. It's unheard of. All you have to do is spend about 20 minutes talking to Scott to understand his passion for the legacy Honda products. And many enthusiasts will tell you the same thing. The older Honda products had extreme character. It was a company that was innovative. They did a lot with very little resource. And in the heyday or the golden era of Honda, when you got into cars like the SIR, the original NSX, the S2000s, the Integra Type Rs, this was just peak Honda for many people. And as we get to take this car out on the road, we're gonna to try to walk you through why that is.
So the car that you, you just drove is a, is a 1991 uh, CRX SIR glass top, which was the ultimate evolution of the CRX. It had the B16 VTEC motor, which we never got that motor, but in Japan, it was pretty legendary. And, and we were, back then, we didn't have instant communication, so we would get to read about this motor in, in car magazines that our friends in Japan would send us. I had, back in the day, one of our test cars was a 91 CRX SI that I drove for a million years. This is always the car that I wanted, which was the SIR. I looked around for many, many years. Um, the problem with these cars is in Japan, they were ridden hard and put away wet, so not too many of them survived. This car is pretty much a time capsule. It's an original paint car, original motor. Everything about the car is as it rolled off the factory when we got it. So not being able to leave anything alone, first thing we did is we uh, replaced all the suspension bushings. It's got a set of uh, Coney Sport shocks that we had valved for it, H&R springs, and a little bit of camber adjustment, and some, some very finite alignment specs. Engine-wise, we converted it over to OBD-1, uh, added a uh, exhaust manifold that patterned the original Mugen design, a Mugen 4 to 1 design. It's got our Mugen recreation exhaust system on it. Uh, we tuned it on a Honda S300 platform, threw a set of valve springs at it, and it made 35, 45 more horsepower than the standard one did. They don't exist like this at all anymore. It's, it, everything's kind of dumbed down now, so it's, everything is neutral and bland to a certain point. Now manufacturers are trying to make front wheel drive cars feel like rear wheel drive cars and they make them feel very benign. They're not alive. Uh, a CRX, you can point the car with the throttle. You are on the throttle, it's gonna push a little bit. You take the foot off the throttle and it's gonna start to rotate. Um, that can catch you out and the manufacturers now, they don't wanna catch anyone out. Mark, we've talked a lot about CRXs in this video. We've talked a lot about Hondas, but I think it's time for you to show me what VTEC can really do. Show me some lift off oversteer, Mark. You may be. Maybe I will. And that's the beauty of this car. You just put your foot in the throttle and you lift off and the car just starts to turn. You don't even have to use the steering wheel. How many modern front wheel drive cars are like that? Nothing feels like this anymore. You know. yellows on a softer setting you know this car is not set up for track this, this is, is a street car this is a street car yeah. yeah i mean this is like the gt of crx excitement and it still feels like amazing everything about it feels amazing i i can see where you know honda when you look at this car how this reignited like driving excitement for front wheel drive and when you know go you go back to the 90s specifically and people like why would you want a front wheel drive fun car and all you have to do is put somebody in this even today i mean yeah. i know it's not the fastest thing on four wheels but there's very few experiences that can even match this or make people understand how special these cars were back in the day i think what i appreciate about it is how whimsical it is Mark. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's not just the engine, it's the transmission. It's the way that the chassis is super light, and it does stuff that no, no normal modern car does. It just... <laughs> I mean, it, like, rotates through as though the, there's, like, the rear is yeah. steering for you. It's so crazy. And there's visibility. Yes, you, you can, can see, see everything. You feel like... 
not only do you feel like you're connected to the car, you can see outside, see what the hell's going on. You don't feel like you're in a coffin. You don't have any interference with anything else in the driving experience. It's just really you, a car, and a very loud engine <laughs> that revs like a motorcycle. You could be having a bad day, and if you got into this car and you went out and just went flying, you would have the biggest smile on your face. And not too many cars anymore make you just happy. Happy the level of this car does. No, 100%. The only thing that came close to this is when I drove the Integra Type R that was like tuned and set up properly. I think my takeaway is Scott can build a serious Honda product. <laughs> yeah, this makes me, you know, I know these are almost impossible to find, but it makes me want to maybe potentially one day own something like this. There's just nothing, there's nothing I've ever driven that matches this. I know a lot of people argue the VW guys are like, well, you can tune a, you know, you can tune a Golf or something like this. And there's all their front wheel drive cars, but this to me is like that peak '90s high revving, naturally aspirated, affordable, fun like shit box just turned into like a ten. So Mark, send me off with some V Tech. The big takeaway from driving the CRX SIR is this is a special vehicle, and it's because it was a last of its kind. They mastered the two-door lightweight hatchback formula that became bloated and bigger and more cumbersome, and just the passion was sucked out of these types of cars as time moved on. As Scott mentioned, the Del Sol, and then later on the CRZ, which was trying to take bits and pieces of this, but failed. And one of the main reasons why this car is so special is its visibility, its lightweight, its engine that revs, and it makes you work for the rewards. Its shorter wheelbase allows you to rotate this car. There's no stability control. It's a lively experience. The manual transmission has this connectedness to it because not everything is isolated out. The steering rack, despite it being hydraulic, it's still quick enough to offer some fun, but you know exactly what the front wheels are doing. And the big question is, why don't we have cars like this anymore? I, I, I continue to ask manufacturers this, but the answer is mostly safety, regulations, fuel economy standards, and of course, this is not what the mainstream consumer wants anymore, at least in North America. This re represents a bygone era of engineers long gone, mentalities long gone. And I think, you know, you just have to appreciate what this car offers. And if you can get your hands on one of these, it's one that you wanna put in your garage and just look at and shake your head. At the start of this video, I talked about a list of cars I wanted to drive, and I'm trying to close the loop on the Honda story. The CRX is done. That kicked off the golden era of Honda. We've completed our video on the NSX Gen 1. We're doing things with the FL5 Type R and future product. But there's a commonality here with this video, much like the LFA, the C8 Z06, and the Miata documentaries. These are incredibly complicated projects for a team essentially of two people. I myself am the technical be-all end-all. I have to be an expert or near expert in camera technology, editing, sound design. I also have to learn about every single car as much as possible and still be engaged in all of that and deliver all of this mostly for free on YouTube. And you know, that gets to be a lot. It's a seven day a week job and it's much harder than my career job, I'll be honest. But there's some things that I have to talk about that make this possible. One, it's the Patreons that help continue to support this and subsidize these videos. And most of those people on there don't even care if they get anything back, they just want us to keep going. And now it's the addition of technical partnerships. In order for me to progress as a creator, I have developed my partnership with Dell even further. I worked with them for 25 years on the corporate side, supporting servers, infrastructure, and all of that, and now they're supporting me on the creative end. My reps, Matt, 
Meg and John understand what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to be honest and help learn and help teach people about all these complicated systems while using technology to make it happen. And when I first started this, none of this would have been possible even with a desktop. The fact that I'm able to take something like this and create large scale projects and even now move into the HDR realm with calibrated displays precision mobile workstations, I can work wherever I go. And that's why you're seeing the amount of videos that you do at the quality that they're at. My partnership with Dell Technologies expands well beyond just the equipment. It's that mentality of taking the hardware like RTX, Nvidia processors or GPUs, Intel processors, and making all of this come together and making it come together quickly with almost no headaches. And that's the reason why I'm very, very loyal to the partnerships that I have. Staying with one brand for 25 years, it's, it's for a reason. And the reason is I'm able to do what I love and that's create these videos. Sometimes, yes, I'm gonna complain about it cause it's a lot, but honestly, there's nothing else I'd rather be doing. So thank you for your time and watching all of these projects.